this video we're going to focus on the auto artwork wizard and this is really the only wizard that i will use from time to time of all of them it's just the one that i more choose to work with even over the next one that we'll focus on which is the auto digitizing wizard um, i find that if i create as artwork and and i convert the artwork to stitches myself i can have better control over it so if I'm using any of the wizards, it's mostly going to be the auto artwork wizard. And I'm going to show you a little trick in this video too. That's, that is something that, um, is kind of fun to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select this, uh, auto wizard icon here and go to auto auto artwork. And I'm going to select an image. And just for the sake of it, I'm going to work with this dog again. And I'm going to hit open. I'm going to hit next. And I don't really need to worry about the size when we're talking about artwork. But a lot of times I will just change it to something that is a little bit larger in size, like maybe around the six inch mark. Um, so I'm going to change this to 150 millimeters. And um, I am in millimeters on this ruler. Let's go ahead and hit cancel. I want to see if it shows me in inches this time. Um, cause the previous one did it and let's select the image here, a dog next, and it does. So this one will show it to me in inches. So I'm going to do six inches for the width, choose next. I can always resize it. So the only reason I go a little bit larger is I want to make sure detail is kept. And if I go too small, um, a lot of times it could choose to get rid of something that is just a really small object. So just something to keep in mind. There's four colors here, the white and the browns and the black. I'm not going to do anything different to it. Hit next. And you can see on this page, this is the vectorized image part. And it's showing me this outline in black around each color. So it's basically showing me what it's created. And I can come in here to the tolerance and I can choose... Um, less or more tolerance and this slider I typically keep it on the default if I go to less and update the outlines um, it's gonna give me more detail if I go to less you can see what happens there it starts removing some stuff so I think the default was 14 and I can fill the background color area um, I can select it. It's already kind of, um, it's going to remove it. Um, but if I wanted to use it, I could click this box right here, or I could use this eyedropper to select the background color. I don't want it in there. So I'm going to keep this unchecked and I'm going to hit finish. And this is going to load it on the screen. Now, because I chose to leave out that background color, you notice that um, I don't have white in here, so I don't have these eyes. It just like kind of left it out. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is artwork. So it loaded, it's doing this color first. It's doing this brownish color second and black third. So that's how it's decided to structure it. Now, um, if I want to just look at the outlines here, let me select everything and I'm just going to click and drag it so you can see what it's created. So you can see that everything kind of lines up or butts up to each other. And that's that's a good thing. Um, so there's not any overlapping going on here. And so it's just something to keep in mind here. Like this, if I drag it out of the way, you can see that it's punched all of that through. So if I was doing this design, I wouldn't necessarily have it in the order that it shows. I would, I would probably, if I was digitizing it, this would be the first thing. The second would be this beige color. Um, and then like this brown, the black, you know, just looking at it, um, I would have it structured a little different, but it doesn't matter in this case because we're just looking at artwork. But one of the things that I want to look at here is if I go to edit mode, you can see that these outlines, they're not all that smooth right here. Um, I could come in and I could like kind of select these nodes right here 
and I could choose like a smooth and you can see that that cleans it up quite a bit. So I might want to come in here and select a lot of these points and just choose smooth. And by doing that, I'm getting a little bit better of a result. Now, when it comes to an area like this, I wouldn't want this point or this point to be smooth because watch, it'll bend it, right? Um, but I could come in here, select these two and do a, a smooth. I could come in and then select, you know, these and do smooth. So you can see I can kind of work around that. So there is a little bit of tweaking that you might want to do once you bring it in as artwork. And that's just to show you um, that it can be done though. Um, like for instance, this one, let me zoom out just a little bit. If I go to that, I need to zoom out a little bit because I can't really click on that beige color. I need to click down here to select all those points, right click and choose smooth and it makes it much smoother. But you'll also notice at the same time, I zoom in, it's now changed how it butts up against that. That's something to keep in mind. Now I have that one selected, the beige color. Let's see what happens if I come in here and select those points only and go to smooth. You can see that it actually did do it the it looks like exactly the same. So everything lines up right. I'm just showing you some tricks here. And that's kind of how you can work with the artwork you bring in. If you want to clean it up a little bit, that's where I would start is by going into edit mode and just changing these to smooth. But anytime you have a point where it changes direction, you don't want to change that one. If you're going to change it, you would change it to something like a cusp, which it already is. You want to keep it at that. Only the areas, like only these at one time, I don't want to change this one. So if I was going to select these, I have to be kind of careful to make sure I only get those. Right click, smooth. So just that's a, another little just tip. But let me show you um, from here. Now you can do anything you want with this. You can convert this to stitches. I could convert it to a fill pattern. You can convert it to whatever you want. So this is why I use the converting it to artwork instead of just converting it to embroidery because I get to choose what type of a stitch it's going to be. So let's go back into it. Let's go um, create a new page. Let's go to this design wizard um, an auto artwork wizard. I'm going to hit next and this time I will keep it the 150. I'm not really going to make any changes here. Um, the one thing that I might do with this one is in this next, I might fill this white background and hit finish. And let's see, um, it does give me the white and let's just like kind of go through here and see what I'm getting with the white. I do get the little eyeballs. So that's a good thing. Um, let me go ahead and change the background color to this gray so I can see all the white. So I might want to select this one and delete it. I might want to select this one and delete it. That's the nice thing about working with the artwork is that you can, you can remove it. So if there's some detail that you want, like, um, oops, select the wrong one there. Um, if there's a little bit of detail that you want, you can, um, I'm having to go in here individually here and you can get it, um, by allowing the background to come through it. So you can see here, we have this up here. I can do whatever I want with it. But what I was going to show you is if I was working with a photo, like I don't like the photo stitch very much. Um, I don't like any photo stitch program to be honest with you. And, um, so, what I can do that's a little bit unique and different that I kind of played around with a long time ago and it really does work with photos. Like, so you can bring in a photo of somebody and do this. It needs to have like a removing background and stuff, but let's see what the size of this is. Um, let's go to 
uh, is it really that large? I think I had it in inches. So when I put 150, I put 150 inches. Not good. Let's go to something like, um, let's do seven inches wide. So this is a pretty good size right here, right? So um, it's not tiny, but what I'm going to do is fill this with motif fills as opposed to other stitches. So with motif fills, you can kind of create your own um, like photo stitch in a way. And it all, I'll just like do a few of these here just so you can kind of see some of the things that you can do. Um, I just select all of them and convert it to motif fills here. So when I have them all as motif fills, you can kind of see that you can see quite a bit of detail here. And so if you work with the um, motifs, you have the ability to change the pattern. So if you want a little bit more depth, you can do that. The other thing that I like about it is that there is no overlapping because I brought it in as artwork. Now you don't have a lot of overlap so your stitch count is going to be much lower, but if you really want something to stand out, you just come up and you make sure that you choose one that's a more filled in motif, right? So this one is filled in pretty well. And so if I choose like this 247, it would be very much like it. If I go to this 248, you can see that it is a pretty cool little pattern. So I could select all of this brown right here and I could change the motif pattern to that 248 all at one time. Let's see what it does here and hit apply. Now, if I want more space in there, I can just change the pattern size so I can make it a little bit larger, like let's say six and hit apply. And now that's going to open up quite a bit. So, for example, like these right here, these fills, um, I might want to change those and use like an auto satin and use a satin stitch for the eyeballs. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to move this to the last object so that it shows up and it's the last thing that's stitched. So those eyeballs are really going to pop out for the black. Um, I could come in here and I might want to choose a much different type of a pattern. You can get really creative with it. Um, you can get a lot of different looks. And that's a great thing though, is you can just play around and get the look that you want. Let's go and change this to like eight. So it's a much bigger pattern and you can see the look you get. Now for this, this is kind of a larger area and you might want to do something unique with it. Let's just see what this 227 does. It's probably going to be spread out quite a bit, but you can see it's like kind of a zigzaggy pattern. Let me turn off 3D view here and you can see that pattern. I don't like the lines in here um, that get formed. So let's go ahead and change that. And um, you can do anything. You can do like this 237 and you can see that the pattern it creates is kind of a unique pattern and you can change like I would definitely make this much because it's a light color I'd loosen it up a little bit um, but you can see that this is like your own like this is like the take of on photo stitch that I kind of started playing around with a lot and had plans to try to incorporate something like this into the software and um, you may see it in the future um, it's very possible um, because we did spend quite a bit of time um, trying to figure out different patterns we could use that would give a similar look to photo stitch but be much more needle and fabric friendly and um, so you can see here um, one of the other things that you can do that when I played around with this is I would copy and paste something like this um, copy paste and I would convert one of them to a run stitch. So I could have a border around that area and it would just kind of clean it up a little bit. You see how that is. And that was just a simple copy paste and convert it to a fill. So you can see, hopefully you can see that there's a number of things that you could do here 
with converting to motif um, fills as opposed to just regular stitches. And you can do this with a regular photograph. I've done a couple um, that were kind of portraits of people and um, that didn't have really much of a background going on. So you were able to focus on the face or the face and whatever they were wearing. I definitely recommend more of a portrait style where you can get rid of the background easily. And again, it's just converting it to artwork first and then selecting everything and converting it to motifs and then changing the motif patterns and fills. And the other thing that you um, may remember that you now can do mixed um, motifs. So you can have variations in your motif pattern. So you can get some really cool looks and uh, I hope that people play around with this. And if you do, please post it on the website. I want to see some people doing some unique things like this with motif patterns and, um, and doing it with photos, with images. And I would love to see results. Just keep in mind, you need it to be kind of more simplistic and you need it to be a larger size, like something around eight by eight, seven by seven. So a five by seven hoop, you're not going to be able to get a whole lot um, of detail at it. So hopefully, I mean, you can do some things, but um, it needs to be like kind of a larger pattern. But you can see that even though this is seven by seven, it's only 15,000 stitches. So it's not a lot of stitches for something that's as large as it is. And um, so, yeah. I hope you got I hope to see you guys do something with it. That's the auto artwork. Once you have it as artwork, you can convert it to whatever you want. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I want to see some um artwork that's been converted to motifs like this. I want to see what some people can come up with. So share it. Create it and share it. See you in the next video.